Hey, what is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of James. My name is Motor Coach World. If you were looking to buy a car in the US today, there would be quite a selection of different brands out there. Toyota, Honda, Subaru, Dodge, Chevy, Ford, Toyota, Kia, Hyundai, Toyota. Let's see, did I leave anything out? Did I say Toyota? Anyway, you would have quite a few choices, but when it comes to purchasing a motor coach, there are basically three main players as far as motor coach manufacturers go in the US. You have MCI, also known as Motor Coach Industries, which also owns Cetra. There's Van Hool, and there's Prevo, which is now owned by Volvo. Now, granted, there are a few other brands of coach manufacturers that have recently entered the US market, like Temsa, which is a Turkish coach manufacturer that entered the US market in 2010, and Irizar, which is a Spanish bus manufacturer that entered the US market in early 2016. On top of these, one might see a few other brands of coach buses on the road, like BCI, which is a Chinese coach manufacturer, as well as Neoplan and Mercedes, but these are rare and they make up less than 1% of coaches being sold here in the US. As far as market share goes, I believe MCI currently has roughly 60% of the US coach market, with Van Hool at 25% and Prevo at 15%. Today, we're gonna take a closer look at Prevos, specifically the evolution of the H series. Joseph Eugene Prevost was born on November 12, 1898 in the small town of St. Clair in Quebec, Canada. At a young age, all of his older brothers immigrated to the U.S., leaving him and his younger brother Alphonse to help their father out around the house and take care of the family. He became quite a skilled carpenter, building houses and barns throughout his teenage years. At the age of 20, Eugene purchased a motorcycle and later developed quite a reputation as a skilled mechanic. Eugene Prevo later built a sidecar and attached it to his motorcycle so that he could transport his elderly father to visit all of his older brother who were living in Vermont. After his father passed away in 1921, Eugene built his own workshop near his family home and started his own business building church pews and school furniture. By this time, Eugene had gained quite a reputation in his local area as a very mechanically inclined and handy guy that could build just about anything. In 1924, Eugene was commissioned to build a frame and body of a bus that would fit on the chassis of the new REO truck. His design and high quality craftsmanship became popular and orders started to come in. With the high demand for his wooden bus bodies and after a fire destroyed his workshop, Eugene decided to construct his first bus manufacturing facility in St. Clair. By 1939, at the age of 41, Eugene Prevost was in full bus production. By the 1940s, Prevo bus design had changed from an all wooden body and frame to a metal body over a wooden frame. And then in 1945, Prevo introduced the first bus with all metal body over an all metal frame. And the rest is history. By the mid 80s, Prevo had become quite a well known and respected motor coach manufacturer. Coach bus companies were enjoying Prevo's line of successful motor coaches like the Prevo Prestige, built from 1968 to 1981, that was offered in a 35 foot version as well as a 40 foot version with a 96 inch wide body, which featured the iconic Prevo roof wrapping side windows that allowed passengers to be able to gaze upwards at amazing views of city skylines and mountain landscapes. The Prevo Le Mirage series, built from 1976 to 2005, these were offered in 40 and 45 foot versions, also with with a 96 inch wide body. In the early 1980s, US road jurisdictions started to approve vehicles to be built wider, and so Prevo began production and released the wide body Le Mirage XL, which was 102 inches wide versus the 96 inch wide bodies. On a side note, the 102 inch wide motor coach bodies are now the standard width of all modern day motor coaches being used in the US. In 1985, Prevo came up with a monstrosity of a coach on an entirely new chassis design, the Prevo H560. Coming in at 60 feet long, standing at 12 feet 4 inches tall, the H560 had two steering axles in the front, a single steering axle in the rear, and two drive axles in the middle of the coach on the front section. The engine was located in the middle, just in front of the two drive axles. This was the first of the H series coaches in Prevo's production line, and quite a bold move on Prevo's part. There's an old saying, Fortune favors the bull. Well, not this time. As impressive as the giant monstrosity was, it had a very high production cost and 
not much demand. Because of that, only 46 of them were ever produced. Production of the H560 stopped in 1992, with operators mostly unhappy with all the design flaws. The middle linkage was prone to failure and any major engine work resulted in technicians having to cut out a part of the frame of the coach in order to get the engine out. Once the engine repairs were complete, the frame had to be re-welded back together after the engine was put back in. What a piece of junk! She'll make 0.5 past light speed. No, she wouldn't. I did mention this coach once in an earlier video I did. I'll tag the link up here as well as down in the description box below if you guys want to check it out. After the somewhat failed experiment with the giant H560, Prevo engineers went back to the drawing board. The H560 was simply too large for its own good. Companies who owned them were restricted to where they could and could not drive them. Many states did not allow the H560 to operate within its jurisdiction because of its weight and size. On top of that, the articulating joint was too complex and some would say not strong enough to handle the weight of the coach. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. You see, the design of the chassis and body style was actually very solid and modern looking for its time. It was definitely a game changer as far as coach design goes. Features like the multi-level passenger cabin with the driver seating in the lower elevation, giving the driver a little more privacy, and with the passenger deck behind the driver raised so that passengers could enjoy a better unobstructed view of the road. Also, the iconic four windshield wipers to cover the massive four-section windshield of the coach. Even modern-day Prevos today haven't changed all that much from the original body style of the H560. Well, except that they're a lot shorter and they're not articulated anymore. Prevo engineers took the chassis design of the H560 and removed the articulation point and the rear section of the coach, creating a 40-foot rigid coach body, dubbing it the Prevo H340. The H340 was an instant hit and Prevo redeemed its reputation as a solid coach builder. Making the body a single rigid chassis coach solved a lot of the shortfalls of the H560 design. The engine was now at the rear of the coach instead of the middle, making it easier to access for maintenance and repairs. The coach was also much lighter and versatile while retaining all the benefits such as a larger frame, meaning more space for passengers and luggage. With three large luggage bays between the front and the rear wheels and two small luggage compartments above the rear wheels, the H340 offered more luggage space than any coach of that time in the US. Buyers could purchase the H340 equipped with a Detroit Series 92 engine, either with a V6 or a V8 option. The H340 was also offered with an Allison automatic transmission or a six-speed manual transmission. The H340 was produced from 1989 with the last one rolling off the assembly line in 1994. By 1993, Prevo wanted to again improve on the H-Series design. The H340 had been in production for five years now and was going strong. Prevo wanted to do a few more touch-ups and modernize the H340 yet again. And so in 1993, Prevo rolled out the H341 at 41 feet long, 12 feet 4 inches tall, and its larger sister, the H345, which was 45 feet long and the same height. The H341 didn't look that much different than its predecessor, the H340, other than the fact that the H341 was a foot longer. Unless you were a real bus nut geek or enthusiast, at a glance they almost looked like the same coach. The H345 was obviously easier to single out because of the significant difference in length. One of the easiest ways to distinguish the difference between an H340 and an H341 was by looking at the first passenger window. The H340's first passenger window had a vertical drop, whereas the H341 featured a more sleek looking angled transition window into the driver's area or the door. Another body style difference was the luggage bay. The H340 had smaller luggage compartments above the rear wheels, whereas the H341 did not. Component wise, the H341 and its bigger sister, the H345, were very different in comparison to that of the H340. On its initial rollout in 1993, the H341 and the H345 came with the Detroit Series 60 engine 11.1 liter producing 325 horsepower, available with the Allison B500 or B500R transmission, and between 1999 and 2000, the Eaton Fuller 10-speed manual transmission was also an option. Later, between 2001 and 2007, the Detroit Series 60 12.7 liter engine with 400 horsepower became available, also with the Allison B500 transmission as an option. 
As mentioned before, when Prevo rolled out the body style of the H-Series coach back in 1985, it was a very modern design and almost future-proof. <sighs> That's the future. What a fascinating modern age we live in. Today, the Prevo H345 is still being produced and demand for them is pretty high. At least, it was before the COVID pandemic. A motor coach company can purchase a Prevo H345 today for around $600,000 brand new, with the Volvo D13 engine as the only option. Transmission-wise, a buyer can choose between the ever-so-dependable Allison B500 or the Volvo iShift 12-speed transmission. Since the rollout of the H345, Prevo has updated the model several more times. In 1997, the framed passenger windows were replaced with seamless double-pane windows, giving the coach a more sleek look as well as allowing the coach to do better at maintaining climate control in the cabin. The interior also received a more modern design with a new dash panel as well as recessed cabin lighting. In 2002, the front and rear end of the coach received a facelift, replacing the box lights with a newer, more modern looking circular lights, as well as replacing the four-piece driver windows with a sleeker looking two-piece window. This new front windshield design allowed passengers a more unobstructed view without the crossbars, as well as solving a common problem where the windows tend to leak when traveling through rainy conditions. In 2007, Prevo introduced the Air Ride Electronic Stability Program to their H-Series coaches, similar to MCI's computer-assisted suspension on the E-models. In 2009, Prevo redesigned the front end yet again on the H-Series, incorporating larger, more aggressive-looking headlights. And in late 2010, Prevo followed up with a redesign of a more modern-looking rear end. With all that said, the actual body and frame of the H-Series coach remained pretty much the same for over two decades now. The old saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it, comes to mind. Over the years, Prevo has earned the reputation of being the Cadillac of the motor coach industry. Their coaches are renowned for being more comfortable and luxurious and spacious on board with more headroom and luggage space in comparison to its competitors. Because of this, Prevo H-Series coaches are more commonly sold as high-end RVs and motorhomes, with some carrying a price tag of over $2 million. Wow, that's kind of sexy. Well, folks, if you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. If you want to support my work and all the hours I put into making these videos every week, you can become a patron. For as low as a dollar a month, you can help with the coffee bill that I rack up while trying to keep myself caffeinated while editing these videos late into the night. And as always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motorcoach world.